listeners, and welcome to another week on Chasm Converses. My guest this week is David Blomley from the band Seven Spies, joining me from London. We talk about his journey through music, starting at a young age in choir, getting the opportunity to work and perform for the National Theatre, and learning the ins and outs of the industry, and teaching his skills in vocals and various musical instruments to others. We also discuss Seven Spies and their new single, Lie, and also share some stage antics and accidents that we've each been a part of in our own respective bands. There's so much to unpack, so join us and let's get conversing. David Blumley, welcome to Chasm Converses. Hiya. So great to have you here, man. It's awesome to meet you as well. And you're joining me from London, yeah? I am. Yeah, well, just out the top of it, but yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, cool. Out the top of it. Are you like sort of north or where about you? So like literally, if you sort of think just where the M25 is, mm. that's, like, <laughs> literally at like 12, that's pretty much where we are. Just, just It's that wow. perfect thing. It's like in close enough to be in the city, like I can get into Camden, get down mm. to the gig, whatever. But then... When I get home, I'm surrounded by a field. So it's that, <laughs> yeah, it's that perfect balance of going, literally only need to just go two minutes that way and it's proper yeah. suburb London. But then, yeah, we we lucked out. So, so completely and utterly. That's brilliant. Yeah, no, I, it's so good that you're so close to those places, especially Camden. I've spent like so much time down there since I like got here in like mid February, just going to the gigs and just obviously having a look around. And there's so many like cool little venues there and just places that you can go. And obviously it's got quite a renowned name behind it as well. So is it quite, is it quite like, do you find it quite like, um, like great sort of living in that area? So it sort of opens you up to the sort of gig scene around Camden. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's always been my like go-to place for yeah. like gigs and stuff through yeah forever being bands from being like a teenager sort of like I'm going are you old enough to be playing here yeah yeah <laughs> the owner uh, you know that, that, like, <laughs> yeah for sure yeah no it's, it's um yeah it's cool this just like there's the cool bars down there like spiritual which is just mm. got million musicians walking in now any given time in that tiny little box of a room which is just mm. it's just yeah it's cool down there everything about it is still cool <laughs> that's brilliant man i was gonna ask you like how did you get your start in music and it's so cool that you know you've just mentioned before that like you know you started doing like bad work and being in like bands as a teenager trying to play <laughs> kicks out in camden so i'd love to elaborate on that like how did you get your start in music was it something that you obviously wanted to do from a young age yeah, I mean, I've literally been doing this with a paycheck since seven, bizarrely. Wow, with a paycheck as well. Wow, <laughs> that's surprising. So, so like, my dad, my dad's um, a cellist, so he was in the BBC Concert Orchestra. Oh, wow. Like, the entirety of growing up. So, you know, mm. you, you kind of grow up and you think that everybody just plays an instrument. Like, yeah. It's like, dad's practicing all day i'm going in they've bought me a violin i'm a toddler and i'm just like trying to hold this thing and then i'm just always singing and they just uh, my, my parents said to me do you want to go join a choir and i was like this sounds fantastic i just get to go and sing when yeah. did and then um they have like people just appear you know scouts and stuff and someone yeah. come to an audition and i was like yeah that oh, sounds wow <laughs> find out it's like the national theater so at seven they're oh like, my goodness do you want to miss school and run around on stage yeah and all <laughs> for it yeah wow. <laughs> so, so, yeah. and my parents like obviously like dad's creative mum's music teacher they're just sort of like yeah obviously we're going to support this so my it's goodness. literally all i've ever done it's That's... like wow it, yeah I, I, I couldn't at this point do anything else you know so i'm no. so it's like all I've ever done is kind of like do music and someone says would you like to do a thing and I go that sounds fantastic and then I've been really lucky to just survive and then do my own music yeah it came out of that whole kind of singing kid classical world mm. and then like but Nirvana are really cool <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to work out how to change everything and then that was kind yeah. of like, Major band, Oasis, kind of like, yeah, 
because all my family's from Manchester, so that was like right. Yeah. Um, wow. But yeah, that's like so. My start in music was like there was no other choice. Had I yeah. like my brother, had I wanted to be a banker, it would have been sort of more confusing. <laughs> like, we have. <laughs> support you you're good at math that's all we've got yeah yeah <laughs> oh man that's like great like wow i mean like even just you know going from just like singing in obviously the choir like you know obviously you were very good to the point where you were able to get scouted by someone who, and i love that because that's just such a music thing to happen like you know sometimes you play so many gigs and so many things or whatever sometimes all it takes is just like one person in a room to see you on any given night just to be like, oh, I like this person. And then suddenly it's like, hey, come do this thing. It's like, oh, shit, my life just took off. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that is completely, it's always sort of like you bumped into a random person who goes, oh, yeah, I'll totally, like, give you a gig. Or like that. I, I think all yeah. of my best gigs, best connections have been randomly through doing something vaguely related to the next thing. Like, I was <laughs> after a studio and someone was coming in running like a, I can't it's like a vocal workshop masterclass or something. Yeah, right. Okay. And then they ended up putting on gigs and they accidentally became a promoter. And so have always given me gigs because wow. I was really nice. And I was like, yeah, no, I'll I'll leave the place open as long as you want. It's like just yeah, let's go for it. And just wow. completely random. You know, I could have not been on in the studio that day, not met that person, not have had that relationship for years, yeah. years not been up. Yeah, I'm actually doing new music. You got any shows, you know? Yeah, wow. That's that's I love that, man. That's that's so cool. Like it's yeah, it looks like it just completely just became like a big just a, a massive thing that kept just expanding and expanding as you obviously were, were growing up and getting older. Like I would, I'd love to go back to like the national theater stuff. Cause I mean, obviously you said you were quite young when you went into, into doing that. Like how did that sort of, I guess, sort of affect your sort of your musical mind, knowing that you were going there a lot of the times to do sort of shows and stuff rather than doing like school and whatever, like being very young. Well, I mean, like I joke about it now. Cause like when I'm doing singing stuff, chatting about singing, which mm. I, for about 10 years um <laughs> yeah I, I know the ins and outs of like how to hold your mouth on an e whether you mm. want it to be sultry or that my handwriting however is horrendous so we know <laughs> what i doing i was in a yeah. i was in a classroom sort of like well classroom i was in a rehearsal room just like going e e e piano just like taking you all, all the way up a scale of how to form this while other people are like getting beautiful a's and use and allow you look at my handwriting it hasn't improved since then i think, I think <laughs> of, of learning that i possibly missed out on and all of but yeah no, i mean it's it, it was it was cool it was it was one of those things it's like i'd rather be there for mm. obvious i mean you're on stage and they're making your own hedgehog to run around in because <laughs> scene is like a whole the whole village is spooking out false stuff and i'm mm. going Okay, yeah, uh, this is far better than maths. Or yeah, for sure. Anything else that can't hold my interest because it's just not as entertaining. But you, I think the great thing about it is just learning that respect for the craft early. Mm. If you, like, you grow up and in there you're a kid and there could mm. be Richard Wilson walking down the um, cor same corridor wor working on something else. Yeah. Very quickly, you don't quote the lines you hear on TV, you know, just yeah. all that a kid would do. And mm. then you're surrounded by these people and just watching them just perform at a level. And yeah. Like yeah, quite constantly, like too, I'd expect, too. Like you're seeing them quite like all the time, especially if you're rehearsing for something else. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like you've, you've got that as osmosis thing. With so many lessons that I like, or lessons, things I take for granted that I do mm. came from observing other professionals when I'm when I was a kid and going, well, that's what you do. Yeah, like, wow. you know, um, like don't stop in a performance. Like mm. that really was summed up for me by watching somebody in a big scene, big argument at the end of the scene, and yeah. they make he set doors mm. and um so he's sort of going to scream into the audience ah, comes the door 
back to the audience ah, and yeah. turns around and knocks himself clean out. Oh no. He doesn't have a clue where he is. He's no. got to make because this is the end of the of the scene. Yeah, right. It's, it's like it's a comedy. So the audience are in hysterics. He's yeah. getting the innovation <laughs> off. But this man is genuinely crawling off because all he's aware of is the fact that I'm on stage, I'm not sure why, but <laughs> I'm off stage. Yeah. Get stage to this incredible <laughs> round of applause, and he's taken away in an ambulance for concussion. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And the and over the tannoy, it's announced that the understudy will be finishing the role. But yeah. you can't, at that point, you're just like it's, it's like the Dave Grohl thing when he breaks his break his leg, and he's like, mm. I "Just broke my leg," and he just yeah. sits down, plays the rest of the show, and then makes it. You know, it's, it's you you learn those things, or even just like vocal rest. Yes, vocal rest is a yeah, that's massive, man. I mean, I I'm a I I sing and stuff as well. Obviously, nowhere near as long as you have been going for, but I also do like screaming and that kind of thing. And like when you start to learn how to do that kind of thing, vocal rest is like imperative to sort of get that repair and that control kind of going as well. And there are some people who really just cannot just do vocal rest; they have to just talk and talk. It's like, dude, shush. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, I am I'm. I got part of it really badly. I got told I couldn't talk for a month. And as you probably <sighs> gathered, I can quite happily just talk. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I can tell for sure. <laughs> In like, but um, yeah, it was that kind of switch over from doing classical opera to I want to be in a band. Yeah. Kind of thing. And everything that I was taught made me sound the other way. Right, you know, okay. I don't want to sound. So... Mm. My only way as a kid, rather than doing the smart thing, I'm sort of going, I need to go and find a vocal coach that mm. does this. Yeah. I just went, ah, just work it out and did the opposite of <laughs> being taught to do. Because I'm like, oh, well, if I sing from here, I get the gnarly, ah, kind yeah. of like, and then realize, and now I can do that with support. And I'm like, I'm just like that's cool. But then yeah. I was throat, 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 dead. Oh, yeah, then, shit. You know, just have, having singer friends far older than me looking down my throat going, you need to sh- just shut up. You need to see how raw your throat is. It's that or not yours. And just going. Yeah, wow, jeez. So big, big, big reality check in my teenage years with that. Yeah. Did you have one of those, like, operations or one of those things where they shove the camera down your throat and you no. can see, like, all your stuff? <laughs> No, no, I, I, I got, I got as far as having a, an opera singer look down my throat, mm. and uh, and she told me unequivocally to shut up and go and see the doctor. And the doctor looks in and <laughs> yes, you, you, you shall. <laughs> <laughs> I decree you shall shut up <laughs> for a month. Good lord. <laughs> things, things that you shouldn't do. Sing for a month. Do you mm. smoke? I'm like, I'm like a teenager. I'm like, no, nah, not, not really my thing. I like sports. Yeah. So I like, like you smoke, you don't sing. Mm. I was like, oh, well, that's me never smoking then. Yes, yeah, yeah like, right. <laughs> like, the one thing that no one please ever take away from me is just like the ability to sing. That's the, it's all I've, it's all I've ever wanted to do. It's more yeah. than anything in the world. And you know, great thing about being in your own band is you get to kind of just do your thing with your own singing, which yeah. is which is, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's special, that. That's awesome. I love that. And, and I mean, even just like obviously looking where you are right now, like I can see that, you know, what you've always wanted to do is like just, you know, it's before your eyes, you know, there's amps, guitars, like you're in your own sort of like your own sanctuary of music, which is just, it's awesome, man. Like do you ever sort of sit back and sort of think to yourself like, man, like I I really did the thing and I am currently doing the thing that I've always wanted to do and you really just sort of like, you know, sit in it for a while. Yeah, so I... It's this thing of going every now and then, just well, not every now and then, I try and almost do it daily, just like going, mm. doesn't matter what I'm doing, I'm mm. doing it for a living. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter if I'm not playing Nebworth in front of 250,000 people because mm. I'm I'm doing music. You know, it's, it's, it's yeah. just like every day I get to do that. It doesn't matter if it's sitting and doing a first singing lesson with someone or if mm. it's uh, or, or if it's being in here recording live you know that's yeah. it's where half that song was done i think actually everything that isn't the drums was done oh really here. oh yeah. wow <laughs> yeah so like 
the vocal booth is i say vocal booth it's very much <laughs> work in process this we, we got lucky this mm. cabin kind of here mm. in when, when, when we got the house and yeah. so the booth's over there the amps over there or there wow. the, what i'm recording with um mm. keyboards over there so it's yeah it was, it was all done in here and it's just yeah it's great i i, I sit in here and go i could have worse evenings <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I think we all have, but yeah, for sure. No, that's, you oh. know, song, release it, see what happens, hope the world likes it, and if not, then enjoy doing it. Yeah, exactly. It's really just taking those like little moments and just enjoying the fact that you just get to do the thing, even if like you know, just I mean, because the thing could be astronomically big or it could be like any sort of level, but just at the level that you're at or whatever it's just like respecting the fact that you're able to do it and you're able to do it to the best of your own ability which is just like yeah man that's that's so cool i also love i mean i had a thought like way way back like just i love this this has been such a good talk so far i'm, just, I'm really enjoying it um but yeah when you're talking about obviously being like uh younger to the, th uh, the theater and stuff and uh learning lessons from people who are much older than you much more wiser and obviously who are a bit more experienced i mean i had that because i even have really seen heaps of like western shows and theater shows before i came over here and like even when i see shows like matilda for instance and i see like kids who are just incredible at just like you know performing and everything like that but it's like you know those shows are on every single day and those kids are doing those things every single day i'm, I'm kind of like man like dude like i wonder how their lives are kind of like outside of doing that because like you know they're doing this all the time and i like that you are able to share with me a little bit of what you went through because that's sort of what they're kind of going through as well and it's such a great eye-opening sort of like transition oh good yeah i mean like as, as the, i think the west i think the west end theater kids are doing like the big west end shows now mm. it's it's even a bit more mad than what i remember because mm. a bit of an odd one but one of the I think he's one of the kids who was in Lion King. So right. Simba mm. was one of the schools where um, a bunch of my guitar army. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, you know, I love that so, you say guitar army and not guitar students. <laughs> That's great. It's definitely a small guitar army. Um, yeah. yeah, but they're, they're wicked. But yeah, they used to talk about so, about him doing the show mm. and how little he was around. Um, yeah. slash, but then the school that they're at is fairly intense it's yeah like, right you know, it's pr private school that aims itself to send kids to high yeah. school very then, high standard institutions and like you know big theater spots and like yeah that's a, a really direct kind of approach i, I feel i feel for the kids like, i really, really <laughs> do like, they're, they're coming in like year four and they're doing we're doing year seven like english or something I'm like oh what? my goodness <laughs> jesus like, like... okay for the next hour we're doing acdc so you have three... <laughs> <laughs> it's like fast tracking the education to like triple like, okay you can't, you can't do this now so you have to like you know do this now like later 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 because you've got to do this right now like wow crazy man it's, it's madness but they 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 were envious of the fact that this kid had their own private tutor i'm like yeah but he's at rehearsal and then mm. he's got and then he's got to come back and do this i was like oh, this homework yeah exactly I, like, I, just, I, I just had a green card it's like couldn't get detention because no. i had work mm. if i met the homework and i could legitimately prove that i was at work it was kind of mm. like okay well you're not going to fail your exam so we understand you know but yeah it seems to be not quite as forgiving or well, maybe that's just the particular <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> That even so in those particular couple of kids but yeah yeah but no it'd be such a crazy life to live man but either way man i'd love to like fast track into like your the music that you're doing right now obviously with seven spies um your uh i listened to your brand new single lies which was really great it gave me like it gave me like i don't know if this is, it gave me like savage garden vibes when i very first sort of heard it and i was like oh this gives me it's oh, like it almost wow. like a 2000s pop rock kind of Thing that I kind of like at the moment is that kind of do you feel that as well? Um, I love Darren Hayes's voice, it's <laughs> oh, such, such a niche, like kind of like going, I heard this of, like, of all influences that I've had on, mm. on like on, on music that I love. That one coming out of line that's an interesting one, but yeah, yeah. 
a, the guy can sing. Yes, I mean, 100%. Like, on, on, on a level, it's just like, I don't, I don't care what band you put him in. Mm. It would sound fantastic. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 I guess, yeah, I mean, we've just been chatting about singing and the songs for me that I listen to, the songs I love are yeah. vocal led. If I love the singer, I can get into the band. If yeah. the band, I can't love the singer, I struggle. Right, like, okay. And so for my songs, it's like, it's got to be, it's got to be that top line. It, yeah. it, it's kind of how you dress the song up, you know. Mm. Um, um, you know, I could I could do it as a jazz version, like if I wanted right. to. Uh, <laughs> but as, long, as long as that top line is like singable and lovely, mm. but but yeah, it's it's it is a, that little bit kind of overblown, catchy sort of chorus kind of thing. I mean, yeah, um, I, I suppose I've got that Kurt Cobain argument of on the one hand you really want to write Beatlesque, catchy yeah. pop songs. On the other hand, you really kind of want to be as cool as Slash and right. Yeah. <laughs> like be I, cool. Uh, I'll just sit perfectly in the middle here and then yeah. Just sing, so and how sing about the, the yeah? It's how about the pop rock element? Because like yeah, poppy like really catchy and cheap, but rock is like yeah, and it'd be like you know rocky like Slash and whatever. But I mean, as I said, like the one of the main bits, I um like one of the I guess the main similarities was like the voice. Like you, you've got such a really nice high kind of voice. Even when I sort of like started listening to, it, I was like. Oh wow, damn! Like that was one of the first things I noticed. I was like, "This doesn't sound like any other real pop song that I've heard." Mainly because like the the singer's voice is like so different; it's pitched like much higher than what I'd expect to, from a normal pop song. But I guess that's what makes it stand out, which is like really awesome. And I, I really enjoyed sort of listening to it and all the rest of it. I'm sure you must have had so much fun like creating it. Is the is the is the band just a two piece with you and uh, someone else? Um. So. Yeah, I mean, we have like two permanent members at the moment, which is me and Ollie. Right. Um, like we 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 did have Sam for years, but Sam mm. is rather good at bass and right. gets snapped by all sorts of people, <laughs> and they keep on offering money to go and play the gigs. I'm like, well, yeah. I'm like, well, I'm not gonna not gonna stop you from doing that. If it's like if if you're gonna go and play a festival, I was just like, oh, oh yeah, I'm, you know. So all the powers uh, here. So it's. So hilariously, there's a bunch of people who jump in and do the the bass for us live. Like it's it's right. almost a rotating funnel of like who's free for a gig and someone yeah. will, like yes, I'm around. I really want to play. I miss yeah. your song. And then it's like oh, that's so cool. I haven't seen you in. Eight. And then they'll end up playing for a while, and then mm. all of a sudden they're busy and they can't do a couple, and then someone else is jumping in. Or yeah, right. Yeah, so it's kind of like there's two of us and just this mm. revolving door of musicians that we've known <laughs> and collaborated with. I mean, the guy who we shot the video with, Torin, mm. has played bass in and out of the band forever. So, wow. um, but whenever it comes to like visual stuff, the first thing is like, right, I have a song, we need to make a video. And then it's like, are you free? Because yeah. Like, and then it's like, I'm not. But I will be, and so um, he's on an edit, and he's turning up and just mm. doing doing the video, and then going home and doing the edit he should have been doing all day. And then yeah. the, the favour is repaid because every Christmas he does some ridiculous Christmas release, and, and then oh, the, right. my, my phone literally went yesterday going, "Dave, there's a Christmas song coming up." Ah, oh, that's so cool, man. It's a dream, and it's, that's just that's that's how the that's how the band is, I guess, and my, uh, the friendship. <laughs> band it's like there's a core group of people that float around mm. this band and this and appear on bits and bobs but it is a bit of a challenge putting it off as a three-piece live because yeah like, there's a string orchestra on there and there's there is guitar part and all of, all of these things so we, we we get i get live and i'm like going i've made a rod for my own back here how am i gonna <laughs> I got to sing and I got to play. It used to be like river dance with pedals. So I had to, right. <laughs> I had to do away with that. I finally bit the bullet and I went, I had to get a quad cortex so I could just program it and just go one button, next bit, next yeah. bit. Because, yeah, yeah. I'm not a very good dancer. So my Michael Flatley impression was not, <laughs> not 
I definitely almost fell off the stage a couple of times missing a Oh, hand. damn. <laughs> I mean, I think we've all had sort of like little moments of that kind of thing. I love that, like, you've got a bit of a rotational thing going through with like bass players. I mean, I, I played bass for nine years in an indie pop rock band back in Australia, Adelaide, where I'm from, um, which was quite fun. Um, I mean, the work, I mean, I've, I mean, we've, I've, my, probably my worst stage thing that I did was that I forgot to turn my amp on and plug my like my cable in before because we were like it was our last show too like it was our last show before I came over here and dead set we were just like getting ramped up backstage and then we all come on and like we like you know drummer first keyboardist next then the bass and the guitarist and I was like rocked up so like, yeah sweet and then I just realized that my coil I just didn't plug my bass in I was like oh shit oh no <laughs> so, like and obviously far too late the song starts and like oh fuck here we go and I'm like oh that's the last show it's supposed to be a bit rough so that's okay <laughs> but I'll never live that down yeah we've, we've all had that we, we had Ollie literally vanish off the stage <laughs> and, we <were laughs> and so we just we finished the, we finished the song and there's this massive wall behind the stage big red curtain wall yeah we finished this track and we we were we were properly rehearsed on this set we knew the cue so it was this track's gone we're straight into the next track it starts as about a couple of bars worth of guitar and then the drums come in hmm. drums just don't come in <laughs> i just turn around and all i see is just ollie's head just appearing <laughs> because this giant wall and curtain it was not a wall <laughs> it was just the curtain and he's finished tracking on uh, and just gone straight off the back of the stage. Oh wow! <laughs> like this post symbol here. No one else has like heard or clocked with the oh. cacophony on stage that he's not even there. Oh and, my god! Like, and it's just they're watching this drummer just sort of like appear in a spinal tap <laughs> kind of moment where they just a bit of like head appears over the drums. We're like, do we start again? Do we carry yeah. on? Like, you almost wish there was like a GoPro in the corner, just like filming like from the side view, so you could see him be like that, and be like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> there, there is, there is a DVD somewhere of him falling, like oh. some, and none of us have got it. It's someone oh, who we did got it to make a thing for someone else's wedding. Oh and wow! A copy of it, but I don't know who I gave it to. Ah shit. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, so this, if anyone happens to watch this podcast, they see this part here or they listen to it, please let's find that video because we want to see Ollie falling backwards off his drum set. <laughs> great memories. <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. But even so, like, I mean, obviously playing live shows is always such a fun time. And even like recording music videos is 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 great as well, especially when you've got like a bunch of people all working together to sort of make it come true and to make it happen. Did you sort of come up with the like the music video concept yourself, or do you sort of have a creative influence that sort of comes in to help you sort of um, get your vision out? I mean, yeah, it was it was just torture sitting <laughs> in the top, staring mm. at a screen for a whole day, mm. uh, <laughs> or more actually, quite 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 a lot longer than a day going. Mm. I want to do something that like kind of gets the uh of the song and just trying to think of a, a million ideas yeah. knowing it was like it's, it was going to be done on a shoestring mm. didn't have a venue didn't have an anything mm. complete panic I've got a lovely director friend who I phoned up and just went I don't know what to do help and they were like <laughs> Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, here's what I did. And they were great in the fact they just went, just get you in a room yeah. that looks cool and and do a thing. So me and Torin got in a room and it was basically the two. We just we just found a studio and just turned up. I printed off a bunch of the lyrics and just went, yeah. hey, here's some cool things that I think we could do in this room. We were just wandering around going, there's cool lighting here, just sing it here and my fiance is a makeup artist, so I got her to paint the lyrics oh, over. Brilliant! And just went. What's a what's as many things that we can kind of do to make this like just the struggle of making a song? Yeah, you know, how to get that into video form. And then Ollie had literally just had a baby, so he couldn't make the video shoot. So right, lucky, okay. guy who's um, filling in for him on drums while he mm. you wondrous child um, mm. was around. And I was like. Alfie, can you come and just be Ollie in the video? And then, and then, and then one, of my, and then one of my students was just like, "I'll come and do bass for you." So it was oh. really 
kind of like we we made this video up over space of like a few hours with a wow. few hours and then uh, alfie and ben just turn up and we rack up in about four runs we get all the footage of the band yeah and then i just got dumped with the with the footage and torin was like i've got to go back and do the edit that i've got to go and do mm. So, so, I did that. So, so I then just sat there with all of this footage going, okay, so this is literally just me sitting on a sofa. Yeah. Bring my hair out, singing. How do I make this into a good video? And just edited it and just... Yeah. It, 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 all, it all clicked into place once we got the look. It was one of those... Mm. I don't know, whether it's like Sin City inspired or something, I was just like, if I can yeah. make cool, then it'll just work so i spent ages on just grading the hell out oh, of this man. video and a sepia -y kind of black mm. to black black kind of tone thing to it and i went yeah. okay now the footage looks cool and then it almost just snowballed into being a thing but yeah everything's very diy kind of it happens in here yeah. it's like exposed with creative ideas and somehow somehow <laughs> things get finished i have no idea <laughs> Uh, I mean, that's the best thing about being a creative man, like honestly, because so many of us start things that we just don't finish. So the fact that you're starting things and you're actually getting them done is perfect. You're doing things right. So <laughs> no, no, no small thanks to, you know, people around me as well. I mean, mm. beyond well, because this song was taking far too long and she just went, okay, for your birthday, I've booked you mastering at Abbey Road. So oh my goodness. And I was like, yeah, I'm not missing that. That's like that's like that's a fucking awesome birthday present. My God, <laughs> I, I'm I'm there with bells on. So yeah. that was pretty pretty damn cool getting to take the song into Abbey Road and just having oh. talked to myself um, with it because it's I mean it's ages. We we first single came out COVID. Mm. I got smashed my voice up. Oh so, damn! So basically, I mean it was a write off anyway. Like yeah, from, right. Here's our first single world. Can't do yeah. anything. Um, but yeah, so many people in the same boat too, but no, I completely understand that. And um, yeah, it was, and then it's kind of like, it was from then. And then we moved house. So, you know, everything. Oh, just wow. <laughs> it's just, wow. It's a single lot. Day, like making this song happen. So eventually she was just like, here's a carrot on a stick. I was yeah. like, I'm a carrot. <laughs> yeah i'll take it for sure <laughs> yeah no i mean like as i said like, i did listen to the other song as well chameleon which is a very good song as well but yeah there was just something different about this one that i that i really liked and and i again i love like the sin city the very surfy kind of vibe and it's got such a really nice aesthetic i mean i've and i know that i know the 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 bless the blessing but also the the curse of editing music videos um and just all of the stuff that you have to do with it all i i edited a video at the start of this year for me and my friend who did a song about lattes um uh which was crazy quite fun but like even that was just like it took me so long and there were times where i was like man i don't fucking do this and i was like nah i have to do this and i'd like smash out like a whole i'd smash out like the first half i'm like yes yeah, it's great and then I just wouldn't touch it for two weeks because like, I, didn't, didn't, I didn't know what part was coming next. And then as soon as I found that next part, it was like, oh, cool. No, no, exactly what's, what's going to be going on. But it's such a, it's so crazy, man. I have such an admiration for people who edit like music videos because there's just so much they have to shift through. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it, it, it was, it was, it was relentless. We also had a camera on this shoot that had been vandalized by a toddler. Oh, so no. So, so we, we, do, we, we're doing the shoot, and, and, and Torrance going to me. He's like, going, so yeah, sometimes it's just going to lose the zoom. Oh, no. <laughs> damn. <laughs> and so he's going, you've got enough footage in there. And I'm just getting home going, please don't have like a shot that I want where all of a sudden my face just turns into blur. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it's the worst, <laughs> man. Yeah. I'm That's like. <laughs> Having so much footage then like having some of it being like just unusable is just like, oh man, it just takes away so much. And it's just, yeah, oh man, all about that for sure. But dude, we've we've gone we've gone like this has been such an amazing chat with man. Like this has been so much fun. This has been brilliant. Um, I'd love to finish up just asking you, um, what uh have you been to a show recently? Um, or is there a show that you've seen previously that you just 
really loved maybe it was a band that you really enjoyed maybe it was your own show maybe that was just really important to you do you have anything like that yeah i've got i've got i've got two quick ones my last last show that we did um was wicked because one of my students was finally old enough to come to one of the shows and it'd be about it for ages fantastic and they just literally at the end of it just packing down you could see them he's like going to dad dad." and just run up and like oh my god that was (laughs) sick what the hell (laughs) why are you teaching me and i was like that and i'm like that's why because you're awesome you know that that was lovely and then show that i've been to um is on my mind at the moment because i should have gone again on friday is um going to see nothing but thieves because right yeah okay his, his voice is ah uh, and um apparently i had the ticket on friday and the person mm. who had who had got the ticket for me and um, my rugby captain he was like mm. oh yeah i had the ticket i meant to call you i didn't I was oh. like, <laughs> no. okay. i was sitting in the car the next day and i was like I don't know if I like you anymore. <laughs> That's you possibly a big moment in my life right here. <laughs> like, how, how can you not? Uh, so, so yeah, but then that got me thinking about when I did actually see them and just, yeah, that might, it, that was just cool. I love yeah. that. That's so cool. I have one of my very close friends. Well, one of my close friends back in Adelaide is a massive Nothing But Thieves fan and she posts about them all the time. And so I've only just started to get into them or just started to start to listen to some things, but they haven't glued in yet. But they will start to now because after that story, I'm like, okay, now I have to go and start listening and see them and all the rest of it. Um, well, thank you so much for having this conversation with me, David. It's been so wonderful to meet you. So great to listen to your um, your single as well. Um, I wish you all the best in your in your musical journey. And we'll have to like catch up at some point. Like we're both in London and stuff. I'd love to pick your brain for more of those stories because like, man, they're, yeah, they're awesome. Do. Definitely, definitely. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for tuning in to the episode this week. I hope you enjoyed the conversation with David and myself. Go check out Seven Spies and their new single, Lie. And chuck them a follow on the socials and keep up to date with everything that they've got going on. There are links in the description of the episode where you can find it all. As for myself, follow me on Instagram or YouTube at This Is Chasm. You can also watch last week's full-length podcast with Laurie Black that is now available on my YouTube channel. Don't forget to please leave a rating or review for the show wherever you listen to your podcasts. And I'll see you again next week for a new episode with a new guest here on Chasm Converses.